So what you drive? I drive a vehicle. What you mean what I drive? A vehicle. What kind of vehicle? I drive a, I drive a Monte Carlo. I got a 2013 uh, Monte Carlo. Um, what year we in? It's a 2013, I said. What year we in now? 2021. 20, what that? 2021. I mean, it's a car. It's, it give me a, from A to B. It's a, it's a, it's a whip. It right. So where you stay? I stay in the east. I got a, I got a house in the east. I got a two-bedroom uh, in the east. A, a two-bedroom? Yeah, two bed. Right? Would you want me to have a, a, a mansion or something? No, I'm just wondering what the, what the rest of it. What is the rest of the house? It's a, it's a, it's a two bed room. Man. It's not like it's 30 people stay with me. I mean, it's a nice. I don't stay with nobody. I don't. I room my body. It was coming in and out the house. It's mine. I'm, I'm independent. Like, what's the problem? I got a, I got a house. Got a car. I got a job. What's the, what's the problem? Why, why? You got me feel like I'm filling out an application or something. You is. I'm interviewing you. I ain't got time to waste. There's other people trying to fill the same position. So, so you, sorry, like, like a bidding war or something. That, well, that's where we at. So. I mean, I'm just trying to get to know you. Like. So, okay. so you got your? I don't, I don't want you to know. I, you got? I'm, I want to get to know you. Yeah, I got, I got, a, I got, a, I got one. You one? Yeah. A whole child? What you mean a whole? I don't know what they have. Oh, I don't. That's one too many. That's but one way want, too many. You don't, you don't do, do men with kids or something? Absolutely not. Oh, alright. So you don't have kids? I see them. Oh no, I got five. You got five kids? Yeah, I got five. Five. So the kids, I mean, kids, blessings, but I don't understand how you got five and you talking, you know. I mean, Because I, I got enough for the both of us. I don't need somebody to have a job. Right, right. I mean, I'm I, I really just trying to, you know, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to get to know you, you know, whatever. Like, Matter of you know, fact, I'm it's coming. not going to work. I figured yeah. it out. Wait. Nope, it's not going to work. Nope. What, what you mean? No, it's I'm not gonna not work. Even, I'm talking to you like a. I know, but it's not gonna work. Gentleman. It's I not gonna work. You done disrespecting me the whole time I've been at the car. All I did was come at you, you know, respectful. I, uh, 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 it's not gonna work. You got two, you got cheering, everything. Uh, uh. But you got five. You got a whole basketball roster. And I get all five of my mother. It starts to whoop your mother. Don't play with me. Don't play that so Get a better job. You ain't even got no real DJs on, bro. Salam alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. This hadith is in Sahih Bukhari, okay? The prophet continued, after Ismail's mother had died, Abraham came after Ismail's marriage in order to see his family that he left before, but he did not find Ismail there. When he asked Ismail's wife about him, she replied, he's gone to search for our livelihood. Then he asked her about their way of living and their condition. And she replied, we are living in misery. We are living in hardship and destitution, complaining to him. He said, when your husband returns, convey my salutation to him and tell him to change the threshold of the gate of his house. When Ismail came, he seems to have felt something unusual. So he asked his wife, has anyone visited you? She replied, yes. An old man of such and such a description came and asked me about you. And I informed him. And what did he say? What did he, what he asked about our state of living? And I told him that we are living in hardship and poverty. What did she tell Ibrahim alayhi salam? She said that we are living in hardship and poverty. Okay. On that, Ismail said, did he advise you of anything? She's replied, yes. He told me to convey his salutation to you and tell you to change the threshold of your gate. Ismail said, it was my father and he ordered me to divorce you. Go back to your family. My father, he ordered me to divorce you. Go back to your family. So Ismail divorced her and married another woman from among them. Then Abraham stayed away from them for a period as long as Allah wished and called on them again and did not find Ismail. He came to Ismail's wife and asked her about Ismail. He said, he's gone in search of our livelihood. Ibrahim asked her, how are you getting on? Asking her about the sustenance of living. She replied, we are prosperous and well off. We have everything in abundance. Then she thanked Allah. Ibrahim said, what kind of food do you eat here? She said, meat. He said, what do you drink? Drink. She said, water. He said, O oh Allah, bless their meat and water. The prophet added, at the time, they did not have grain. And if they had grain, he would have also invoked Allah to bless it. If somebody has 
only these two things in it as a sustenance, his health and disposition will feel badly affected unless he lives in Mecca. The prophet say Salim continued. Then Abraham said to his Abraham said to Israel's wife, when your husband comes home, give him my regards and tell him to, he should keep firm the threshold of his gate. When Ishmael came back, he asked his wife, did anyone call on you? She replied, yes, a good looking old man came to me. She she praised him and, and, and added, he asked about you and, and I informed him and he asked about our livelihood and I told him what we were, what, what we were in a good, good condition. Ishmael asked her, did he give you any piece of advice? She said, yes, he told me to give you regards to you and he ordered you that you you should hold firm the threshold of your gate. On that, Ismail said, it was my father, and you are the threshold of the gate. He has ordered me to keep you with me. Family. What the sisters have to do, black women, is when you are listening or reading this hadith right now, you need to ask yourself in an honest, objective way, which wife am I? Am I the first one or am I the second one? That's the only question you need to ask yourself. In the realm of the black family, which wife are you? Are you the one who tells the people that you're living in hardship because of your husband and blah, 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 blah. Are you that woman? Are you the one who is grateful and thankful for your husband? Imagine all these single mothers that we have in the black community Brothers are marrying these women, and you still find a way to cha chase that brother out the house. Which wife are you? Didn't even have grain, let alone meat, but she's bragging on her husband. This hadith, Sahih Bukhari. Pay attention to this hadith, black woman. It's not me anymore. It's not Kevin Samuels. It's not Dr. Omar Johnson. This is the messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is giving women advice the prophet said i was shown to hellfire and that the majority of its dwellers were women who were ungrateful where are the feminists now where are those who are talking about uh women's rights and and this and that and black man this and that but where are they now this is the messenger of allah speaking the trustworthy the truthful you think he's saying this because he hates women the messenger of allah hates women too he hates women too he's a misogynist too the prophet of allah it was asked do they disbelieve in Allah or are they ungrateful to Allah? He replied, they are ungrateful to their husbands. The people thought they were un the ungratefulness of the woman was to Allah. That's what they were thinking in their heads. Do they disbelieve in Allah or are they ungrateful to Allah? And the, he replied, they are ungrateful to their husbands. This ungratefulness to the husbands in the black community is destroying our families. Let's call it what it is today. Who is going to come and say that the messenger of Allah was lying? Who's going to come and say that the messenger of Allah is a misogynist, a woman hater? Who's going to say that? Where are they? They are ungrateful to their husbands and are ungrateful for the favors and the good charitable deeds done to them. Does, does this sound familiar here? If you have always been good and benevolent to one of them, and then she sees something in you, not of her liking, she will say, I have never received any good from you. This right here, these hadith that I'm quoting, it pretty much sums up the, in my opinion, the biggest problem in the black community. When you look at the black community, the only community that is, is running on, on a matriarchy and it's time for both the black men and the black women to destroy this matriarchy and bring it back to a patriarchy. And it's gonna require a hell of a lot of cooperation, but we need to be honest and we need to look at what's happening in our communities in an objective manner. Like I said, all these people that are giving you horrific bad advice, who is giving the better advice now? Abi Dawood, I went to Al-Hijra and saw the people prostrating themselves before a satrap of theirs. So I said, O Messenger of Allah, O, me o Messenger of Allah, has, has, the has the right to a prostration made before, made before him. 
when I came to the Prophet, وسلم, I said, I went to Hijra and I saw them prostrating themselves before a satrap of theirs. But you have the most right, O Messenger of Allah, to have the people prostrating themselves before you. He said, okay, so mind you, and this, and this again, this is kind of like those people who like to worship saints and <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they want to worship Sahaba and saints and Ali and all this kind of stuff, right? This right here, let's see, let's see what the Prophet said. He said. Right, those people were were prostrating before something, and the Sahaba saw this. You know, you know, he said, "You know what? The Messenger of Allah has more right to be made sujood." What did the Prophet say? Him say, he said, "Tell me, if you were to pass by my grave, would you prostrate before yourself before it?" This is the Prophet of Allah. Okay, he's. I said, "No." He then said, "Do not do so. Even if you pass by the grave of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, do not prostrate before it." And what did he say after that? He said, "If." I, if meaning if the Prophet ﷺ had the power, the ability to do so, if I were to command anyone to make a prostration before another, meaning another other than Allah, I would command the woman to prostrate themselves before their husbands. Y'all hearing me? I would command the woman to prostrate themselves before their husbands because of the special right over them given to husbands by Allah. These are the hadith you need, you need to be studying in a black community. If you want, if you're serious about helping the black community and the black family, study these hadith because all this single motherhood and stuff, it ain't working for us. Paper gold. You see, black folks are chumps. If America were to tell you to bring all the rocks in this country to her and she'll give you a million dollars for it, you'll do it. And the next day she'll tell you we're using rocks for currencies, chump. <laughs> <laughs>